So in my world, my work is I'm quite convinced there's such a thing as a lithium deficiency disorder. So lithium, it goes back 13.8 billion years, the Big Bang. So there are only three elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Really? And the Earth's crust is filled with lithium. What I'm really seeing now, and this is worrisome to me, is this, this explosion of, of psychiatric issues and illnesses, of attention issues, of autism, of violence, aggression, behavior, suicide, the whole spectrum. And it, it just seems like it's more and more and more than it was 50 years ago. And, and I wonder if you have any insight, because you, you've been in this for about that long. <laughs> you know, what, what's changed? And is this, is this really true that it's all increasing? Because is it better detection or, or is it actually that more people are messed up? I think it's clearly increasing. Uh, the, the good news is people now talking about it. But I, I think absolutely rates of childhood, major mental illness from eating disorders to ADHD, it's increasing. And I think the factors are broad. I mean, our, our diets are the you know ultra-processed foods that um, are now catching up with us for the last 30 years has profound implications for child mental health. Hey. Social media, you know, I don't see it as the cause. I use the term the gasoline on the fire. Yeah. So I, yeah. Don't, I don't think it's causing it, but it's kind of you know, the gasoline on the fire. And then, you know, all the environmental things that bind uh, nutrients. A, a lot of my interest has been with um, the trace mineral lithium. Mm. Thousands of hair tests of p kids with lithium. Mm. When I started, you know, I'd get like 25, 30% undetectable lithium in the hair. Now I'm seeing 75%. Wow. So I don't know if, if it's the bottled water. We're not getting lithium from our natural tap water sources or other environmental things binding it, but I, I believe that's a factor. So between the environmental toxins, between the malnutrition, the sugar, the kind of, I believe the genetic vulnerability catching up with us, it's just a kind of perfect storm that has resulted in kind of this mental health crisis. Although, you know, I, I always stress that I, I'm tired of hearing the term mental health crisis. Yeah. Because I, I think the better term, at least for us, it's a crisis of care. It's the yeah. model. Yeah. Because yeah. it is treatable. It's not just numbers going up. Yeah. I, I think this is so important. And it's hard for people to understand the power of this approach. Oh, okay. Take a little vitamin here. Or change your diet there. Or maybe to do this or that and it'll help. But we're talking about radical shifts in people's biology that affects their Depression. I mean, I, I remember one patient I had who had really severe depression. She also had really severe weight issues and gut issues and a million other things going on. And it turned out she had really high levels of mercury. And we treated her and her all her symptoms went away. Her depression went away. Now, most psychiatrists are not checking for mercury. They're not checking yes. your poop test. They're not checking your vitamin levels. They're not looking at you know your hormones probably. Maybe they'll look a little bit of thyroid. If your thyroid's low, they'll give you a T3. But this, it's kind of not even on the radar. I'm just so blown away by the degree of improvement in some of these patients. And I'm sure you've seen the same thing. I wonder if you maybe share a few stories of some of your cases over the last years and what, what, what you found to be so kind of mind-blowing. These are particularly children who were put on a trajectory of, of major mental illness, you know, inpatient hospitalizations, mm. Um, multiple medications, mm. and once you're on that path, it's it's hard to get off that train. Yeah. yeah, you know, I have a bunch of cases with just celiac disease. So chronic malnutrition from age six to age twelve mm. is gonna, for some individuals, result in major mental illness, wow. anxiety, depression, and just treating the celiac disease. Those symptoms get better. So my favorite stories are kind of these irritable, aggressive kids kicked out of private schools. Yeah, you know. Yeah. There are schools that are getting a lot of money yeah. from a parent and um, low dose nutritional lithium kind of was the answer. Um, they have a family history of major mental illness. They're uh, aggressive, they're irritable, and just small amounts of nutritional lithium was enough to kind of keep them um, b behaving. So, okay with, like behavior issues, ADHD, and these were kind of more severe, but they were ADHD. But the impulse control was such where they would hit other kids. A little violent yeah. kids, yeah. And, little, and little they, mini they, sociopaths. <laughs> well, well, no, they, they they felt bad. The sociopaths yeah. wouldn't feel bad. These kids <laughs> they would felt bad. hit, and then they'd feel terrible. Oh. They just couldn't control their impulses. Yeah. But yeah. these tiny amounts of nutritional lithium, mm -hmm. they were able to kind of inhibit that 
aggressive impulse and um, and be able to actually get back in school. It reminds me of a, a case I had who had severe behavior problems. He was 12 years old and been, you know, kicked out of kindergarten for you know, being disruptive and was on Ritalin for years and, you know, diet full of junk food, processed food, just struggling, you know, yeah. very, very sick. And also had other issues. He had like gut issues and neural bowel and allergies and uh, headaches and insomnia and anxiety. And like, so he had a whole pro- list of problems, right? Anal itching and, and things that most psychiatrists wouldn't pay attention to or care about, but they were all bits of data that were highly important. So things that most psychiatrists would discard as, oh, that's not my domain are actually the answer, right? right? And they're not looking in the right place. And and this kid was just such a striking case because we, we basically put him on an elimination diet, got him on whole foods, replenished the nutrients that he was missing. He was missing everything, zinc, magnesium, omega-3s. He had high trans fats. He had low B6. I mean, just the whole bucket basically was empty. We got rid of a little lead that was in his system, and we fixed his gut. He had a lot of grow overgrowth of yeast because of all the sugar and everything he ate, and we kind of cleaned up his gut. And two months later, the mother comes back, and she's like, well, my little kid's better. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah, here's his homework um, from before and after. Here's his handwriting before and after. And, and we're going to put in the show notes. I wrote an article about this in, in a medical journal, and I, I published it because it was just so compelling. And, and you couldn't read his handwriting. He had severe what we call dysgraphia, which is really bad handwriting. Uh, I got mine after medical school, so I don't think <laughs> I, you know, I sorry, it was an early onset condition. <laughs> but, but his handwriting in two months went from illegible to perfect penmanship. Right. There was no... Uh, you know, occupational therapy or handwriting lessons or any of that. It's just his brain went from being completely asynchronous, chaotic, and dysfunctional to functional and coherent. And he was able to actually not only have better handwriting, but not have ADD anymore, not have behavior issues, not have any of his other health issues like his gut issues and his headaches and his skin issues and his allergies all went away. And I was like, wow, this is amazing stuff. And that's kind of what got me to write this book the accident of this, this ultra mind solution and and uh talk to this kid you know years later and he graduated from like aerospace engineering or something you know so and we, we we really have a whole generation of kids that are not that are being neglected in my view that are being maltreated because they're not actually taking advantage of the current evidence of science because what we're talking about is not stuff we made up you know in our garage it's stuff that's in the literature right it's just not being applied right so maybe take us through the lithium story because I think most people might not have heard about this. Uh, lithium sounds like it's something you treat bipolar patients with. It's something that we learn in medical school is toxic. You have to measure blood levels, and you don't want to take too much of it, and you can get thyroid suppression, and it's like a little bit of a hairy thing when you use it as a doctor. So can you can take us through the, the difference between therapeutic uh, medication, pharmacologic doses, and nutritional Sure. Lithium therapy, what we mentioned some of the causes, filtering water that's in our soil, it's in our in our water, but we're not we're not you know getting those now. And so you're seeing this increase in, in sort of nutritional lithium deficiency. And we don't think of it as a vitamin or mineral. We need calcium, we need magnesium, we need zinc, but nobody says, Oh, you need lithium, right? So in my world and um, my work is I'm quite convinced there's such a thing as a lithium deficiency disorder. So lithium, the story it goes back, you know, thirteen point eight billion years, the big bang. No. So there are only three elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Really? In the Big Bang. So lithium goes way back, and the Earth's crust is filled with lithium. So lithium is a natural element, and it's essential for human health in small amounts. And the early studies in, in lithium in the 70s demonstrated the amount of lithium in, our, in the tap water, in our drinking water, uh, varied geographically. If you first studies were in Texas, one part of Texas, high lithium. Guess what? They had low rates of suicide and mental illness. Another part of Texas mm. had low lithium. And they had high rates. Interesting. And we've done these studies all around the globe. And the amount of lithium in the tap water predicts exactly rates of suicide. Mm. High lithium, low rates. Mm. And, and we can 15 different countries millions of, of data points. So it's a pretty strong correlation. It's not Absolutely. causation, but it's a pretty strong correlation, right? And so it's an essential mineral, and I'm convinced that genetics, some people need more, and also nobody's drinking tap water anymore. Uh, we don't get a lot from our food. Most of it was from the water. So that small amount of lithium, two micrograms, uh, milligrams a day might be what we need, as some yeah. people estimate. 
many people aren't getting it. Yeah, there was a day when tap water was safe to drink. Not exactly. anymore. <laughs> we never had a bottle of water. I was like, yeah, you just drank the tap water. And those individuals with family histories of addiction, aggression, bipolar, um, I believe those families have just a higher need for lithium. And if they're in the wrong you know, geographic area, they're going to have symptoms. So small amounts of what we call nutritional lithium, mm. one, two milligrams, can have major implications for mental health. One or two milligrams. I start at one or two, maybe go up to 10 or 20 milligrams. In medicine, when we use it for bipolar disease, it's like 300 or 600 milligrams. Or 1,800. Right. Yeah, yeah. So six to 1,800, it is, it is toxic, does have side effects, affects thyroid and kidney. So as psychiatrists, we shy away from prescription lithium. Mm. But as functional docs, we should be thinking about low-dose nutritional lithium. And how do you measure it? Because it's not on blood tests that you can do, or you have to do a hair analysis? Hair analysis is, I find, the most helpful. Mm. There should be no blood level of lithium for any of us. So blood tests aren't going to help. So a hair test, uh, we all should have a little lithium in our hair. And you'll see many individuals have undetectable lithium. So normally when you have something in your diet, a mineral, it gets excreted in the hair, whether it's heavy metals like mercury or minerals. So a hair test can check for minerals, yeah. it can check for metals. So it's a very useful tool. We don't use it much in medicine, only a little bit. 30 years ago, I, was, I you know, wouldn't get up in front of my colleagues and talk about a hair test. But now it's so essential to my practice as a child psychiatrist. I'm very comfortable talking about looking both at heavy metals, lithium, magnesium, copper, zinc. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, there was a JAMA article published years ago about uh, uh, President Andrew Jackson, uh, and the article was basically talking about how crazy he was and and how they found a bunch of his hair, and they analyzed his hair, and in his hair they found high levels of mercury and lead, which makes you crazy. Sure. And the mercury came from a remedy that was used for almost everything back in the 1800s it's called calomel, Huh. which was a, a memory for infections and for pretty much everything. So Lewis and Clark took across the country. And also he was a bit of a hothead and he would get in all these duels and get all this lead buckshot in him. So the <laughs> lead from the, the gunshots and the mercury made him a little nuts. So that was Andrew Jackson. But that was a hair test that they published in JAMA. So it's not that, that medicine doesn't understand that these things are in here. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here.